AMC 10A 2020 Problem 13, a frog sitting at the point 1 cube begins a sequence of jumps where each jump is parallel to one of the coordinate axes and has length 1 in the direction of each jump up, down, left, or right is chosen independently at random. The sequence ends when the frog reaches the side of the square with vertices 0, 0, 0, 0 4, 4, 4, and 4, 0. What is the probability that the sequence of jumps ends on a vertical side of the square? So to make sense of this question, first draw yourself a little graph like this to help you understand visually and conceptually what you're working with. So the sequence ends when he lands on a vertical side, so he, he must either land on the left or right side to be considered all the full possibilities. So right off the bat, he can go jump leftwards for one unit right here, and he will immediately reach his destination and it will end the sequence. So we have a, a one-fourth chance of doing this. And now, he can jump up or he can jump down. But first, let's not consider this case. Let's consider the case when he jumps right to the center point. Now, the center point is a special point because at the center point, he has an equal, he has an equal likelihood to travel to any of the four vertices, right? Because he can go one fourth up, he can go up fourth left, right, down. It's very obvious that he can do so at the center point. It's called an advantage point. But depending on whether he goes up or down, it will give advantages to going on the horizontal side or the vertical side. And we're trying to care about the vertical side. Now, if he jumps to the right, that is a one-fourth chance. And from this one-fourth chance, what is the probability that he can reach this vertical side? Well, he can jump back after he comes to the center point, to the original point that he started out with. But if he goes, if he goes there, then it cancels out the entire order that we're trying to deal with. And if he travels up, it will give an advantage to traveling to the horizontal side. And likewise, if he travels downwards, it will give an advantage to traveling on the bottom vertical side. Like, so if he does this, it will not give an advantage to reaching the two desired sides, which is the two vertical sides. Therefore, it's simply the one-fourth chance that he jumps to the center point multiplied by what? It can be multiplied by the half chance that he doesn't go up and down. Because if he doesn't go up and down, because if he goes up and down, again, it will give an advantage to going to the horizontal sides. And we want to go to the vertical sides. So we don't want him to go to the vertical sides. You can also perceive this as the half chance that he goes right or left. And when he goes to the right or left, how many choices does he have? Well, we can multiply this by three because it's it's the three chances that he does not go back to the starting point or to the two horizontal sides. Why is that? Because if he goes back to the original point, then that cancels out the entire possibility of him trying to reach the two vertical sides. Because if he goes back to the center point, it'll just be the one fourth chance that he goes to the leftmost vertical side. So it has to be multiplied by three, the chance that he doesn't go to any of the three sides that we don't want him to go. We don't want him to go to the top, we don't want him to go to the left, and we don't want him to go to this one because we, are, we have already considered the advantage that by being on one, two, to the rightmost side. So this will give me the final solution. You might be wondering why I add each of the following possibilities and why I multiply right here. The reason why I'm doing this is because this is casework. This is independent. Every single job is independent of one another. And since it's independent, this is casework. So we must add each case. Furthermore, we multiply one fourth with one half with three because with each jump, if you make it to the center point and he goes to the upper bottom points, then those are influential. They are not independent of one another because they will influence how the next step would go. Therefore, we must multiply these three terms. Adding it, we get one fourth plus three eighths, which gives us 5 eighths, meaning the solution will be answer choice B.